Good morning. Just like that, it's eight o'clock. I was getting everything ready and eight o'clock snuck up on me. I almost missed it. I will wait a couple minutes. Let's see who's here. Good morning, Anita. How are you? Hi, Mary Eileen. Hi, Gail. Ellen. Oh, how are all of you guys? It's nice to see you. Wish you were here with me. Hi, Kim. Happy Wednesday. Boy, we come around to Wednesday quickly, right? Um, hi, Ellie. Good morning, Donna. Happy St. Pat. Is today St. Patrick's Day? I guess it is. Wow. That's exciting. Sort of like shouldn't be working today or something like that, right? I should have painted something green, but there's something green in what I'm going to paint. I didn't even think about it. Um, all I'm focused on is the first day of spring on Saturday. I can just breeze right through St. Patty's Day, even though maybe I'll have to have a beer at some point today. Um, so today I'm going to paint. Um, no, wait, let me flip this around. This is a photo that I took in my yard like two or three, I don't know, probably this weekend, of hellebores. Somehow I missed them for half of my life. I never even knew they existed. And I found out it's because they come up first um, in the spring. And I'm not usually outside when it's still cold out. So I've missed them. But today I wanted to play around. I keep wanting to experiment more with being a little crazier with my underpainting or just with kind of letting loose. So... I am going to paint um, the complementary color as my base transparent layer. I don't know what this is going to do. It might turn into a muddy mess. It's just something I wanted to play around with, and I figured, why not on a Wednesday? I love experimenting with things. Like I don't know if you're anything like me, but I wake up in the middle of the night thinking of things I want to do, and there's just not enough time for it all, but no, I I always forget to click that off and then I, so this is one of the things I wanted to play around with painting with complementary color as the base coat to see if it, it adds to the painting, letting that color, trying to let that color show through, or it could be a huge flop. But that's okay too, because you don't learn anything if you don't try new things, right? So how is everyone? I accidentally woke up way too early this morning, so I almost was going to make a whole second pot of coffee, and I think I should have, because right about now I'm wishing for it. <laughs> but I never think two, two pots of coffee is a good thing for me. So, where's this? So I'm going to put the complement of red is green. I'm going to put green underneath the red areas of my painting, and then I'm going to go in and put red underneath the green thinking that it might be a really nice contrast to have that color show through or maybe not <laughs> so how is everyone how's your week going so far now that it's St. Patty's Day and I didn't even know it so that's kind of brown yeah, I don't even know if I'll be able to think about this correctly, but it's fun to try it. Is anything new? Um, I don't think there's anything new with me. I want some brighter pink underneath there. Good morning. I've done this with complimentary acrylic. Yes, that's I watched someone doing that, and that's where I got the idea. I wanted to see if my brain will even do anything for this with this. Because um, sometimes, like even to experiment with something, it takes a while to get used to it because I could do this and not like it. But then if I do it a few more times and get the hang of it, it could turn into something. Good morning, Leslie. How are you? Where's everybody tuning in from? I'm do a little off 
feel like a little purple might be nice in the dark areas. Good morning, Emily. I always think it would be fun to like kind of really make a crazy background and then go in and, and carve it out of that. That could happen today. Marco Island, Florida, that's fun. All good in Mississippi, good. Good morning, Emerson. Emily, did you see Emerson's on here? How are you, Ems? Tell Emerson happy St. Patty's Day. Is she wearing green today, Sarah? Emerson's my, my neighbor. She's four. Well, I imagine she is dressed for St. Patty's Day today. She didn't miss it like I did. Leslie, this is a, called a hellebore. It is, um, it's the first flower to come up in the spring. And uh, once I found out about these, I actually went and bought some. And now they're growing in my yard. And I remember to go look at them and take photos. <clears throat> From France, can you say how to know what color to start like we're doing now? Well, I normally, I usually do my base layer with the colors, the true colors more, but today I felt like playing around. I'm doing complementary colors underneath. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a darker um, green too. So I'm experimenting today. That's what's happening. We have a green shirt and a few hair clips in. Oh, good. Yeah, I guess I should have thought ahead. I don't even know if I have anything that's green. Probably not. Be kind of a fun thing to do, I think, with your mind to try and paint something and do it in a completely different color. Like look at the color photo and then try and make everything that's one color a different color. That'd be a like a brain puzzle that would be pretty cool. South Carolina, are you having a gray, misty morning? You're probably having lovely weather already in North Carolina. Or maybe you always do. Now, I guess these should be complementary colors, too. That seems crazy to me. It's like I want, I naturally want to go where the right color is. <laughs> crazy, I love the crazy color. Judy said, I have an artist friend who uses the Cape Cod underpainting method. His name is Mike Rennie. He calls this step his crazy color stage. And Judy, does he do complementary colors as his crazy color? Or does he just have fun with it and put anything down? I love that idea. That is so up my alley because I've really been trying to even lo loosen up even more. I seem to have more fun when I'm less controlled with what I'm doing. Life is too much about control. We gotta let loose sometimes, right? Oops, I'm running into that. This will be interesting. I feel though, <laughs> I have to think a little bit harder while I'm doing this. But I guess it'll get easy once I go to do the right colors in the right spots, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Now that really looks crazy. Oh. <clears throat> Whoops. All right, I think that's enough of that. Boy, that was quick. It's only 8.10 and I'm ready to mix colors. Yikes. Do I need any more darks in there? <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I don't know. This might not do anything. Who knows? I would think that it would have a different effect if the base paint is wet or dry. Yeah, Ellen. Yes, it might. And so it might get muddy because I it's not dry. Like if I did it with acrylics, that base layer would already be dry. But we'll see. All about taking risks. I love doing that. <clears throat> I think, did I miss something? Time change, you're earlier now. Oh, I am. Didn't your time change? Are you in Europe? Is there is there daylight savings time in Europe? I never even thought about that. Everything in the shade is underpainted with blue, purple, or green. Whoops, that went away. Judy says, everything in the shade is underpainted with blue, purple, or green, and everything in the light is underpainted with red, yellow, or orange shades. Under the sky is always pink. Check his work. I will. Judy, I already forget what who you told me. With those markers. Oh, familiar. Oh, you're asking about these are called um, RNF pigment sticks. It's actually oil paint in a stick form. So they're kind of like big, fat, soft crayons. Judy, you'll have to remind me of that name. I can't go back and look right now. Oh, thank you, Anita. Thank you. I think I'm... Europe doesn't change. Oh, on the same date. I think they were talking about not, not doing that anymore, not having daylight savings time. That'd be fine with me. <clears throat> I don't know. I think that was for the farmers a long time ago totally not sure what the benefit is these days. Dark, dark red. <clears throat> we stay the same in central, no time change. <clears throat> so it's always an adjustment because everyone else does. Yeah, that is crazy, isn't it? Sarah says, my girls just hopped out of bed and asked, what's Miss Kim painting? I'm painting hellebores today. <clears throat> hellebores are the first flower to pop up in the springtime. I was visiting a friend yesterday at lunchtime. We were brainstorming some fun projects maybe to do um, for the holidays, something that we could all make together. And um, on the way home, I thought about stopping at the place where I got my hellebores like two years ago to get more, but I had too much work to get done, so I didn't do it. Now I wish I would have. <laughs> I need some light pink ones. I feel like that's a little muted. Maybe I'm gonna put a little bit of permanent rose in there. Mm, I think I need more permanent rose. That's pretty. That's pretty good. <laughs> Such an ugly flower name. Yeah, it isn't a very attractive word, is it? Hellebore. Hellebores. Helleborus. I don't know if it's hellebore. Bores or helleborus. I never know if I should spell it H-E-L-L-E-B-O-R-E-S or B-O-R-U-S because I think I've seen it both ways. <clears throat> I need some browns. I think this is brown. I actually don't know. I don't even remember what I was working on yesterday. Oh, I do know. I had a little time-lapse thing. I was working on a painting for... Um, I'm doing the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show in June, and it looks like it may indeed happen. So I've got to create some artwork for that. I don't have, I have a big white canvas behind me that I'm ready to start painting. I'm excited to do that, maybe this weekend. Good morning, Lonnie, how are you? Oh, is that also what they're called, Lonnie? Lenten Roses. Oh, well, that's a really nice name. We could go with that. I like it. Lenten roses. Mm. 
Yeah, we're our family in the past. We always used to do my my husband's family's Russian Orthodox, and we used to always make the Pysenki eggs with the wax. And I love doing that, and we're thinking about doing it this year. Um, because Isabel, like we always did it with when my older children were young, but Isabel really hasn't gotten to have the same fun experience of doing them. So if we do, I'll have to share that with you guys because it's a really fun process. Did it, do any of you ever make them? It's kind of like batik on an egg. Others are a little bit off. Yeah, I like calling them Lenten roses. That's nice. I should, oh, there's my coffee. Let me have a little coffee. Hmm. Should I start with this? I'm trying to think if there's other colors I need. It's a really pretty palette, isn't it? Pale pinks. I'll do this with a little bit of green in it. Ooh, that made that a fun color, didn't it? It's beautiful. Let's <clears throat> hope I have enough. Okay, I think that's enough to start. Good morning, Jay McGee. How are you? <clears throat> Good morning to Ottawa. Is it really cold there? Judy, I am too. I was working on that. Oh, if you're in my collective and my inspiring art group, I forgot someone had asked me if you should gesso both sides of your paper. And yes, gesso both sides if you're going to get ready for it ahead of time. Totally um, forgot about that. make it really dark <clears throat> so I wonder if I have dark a dark complement underneath it's like going to make it go really dark so I might have to go a little lighter hmm. got nice shadows over here Mississippi Lake Carl Carlton Place. <clears throat> um, I have to do that. How did that happen so fast? Just what did you say? I thought it was just done in a minute. Yeah, it did go fast. I don't know why. It seems faster than normal, doesn't it? To um, try to pay attention to let some of the the color show through that I put in there, so randomly, recklessly. Nothing better than a little random reckless color, right? Never. keep wanting to do an entire painting of like pinks and browns but somehow I just can't get there I start my friend my friend Lori mentioned last week when when I was painting I started and said that I chose the subject matter because I felt like painting gray and then she wrote to me afterwards and said that was the most colorful gray I've ever seen because it, it turned out anything but gray I keep trying to experiment with neutrals pinks and browns and Somehow it always just finds its way to being whatever 
whatever it wants to be and not what I intend in the beginning, but I guess that's the way it's supposed to happen sometimes. Right? Can't have control over all of it. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I don't know. This is certainly letting you see the, the messy middle of taking risks and uh, not caring if it doesn't turn out. And that's always a good thing to do now and then, or often, actually. I think I need this to go a little gray or something. What's this color? I have a friend coming to pick up a painting. Um, it was a commission painting for a very good friend, and I haven't seen him in a long time. He's coming to get it today, so that'll be... Fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, I honestly don't, my brain doesn't know what to do with this information. It's craziness. I don't know what I was thinking. to get some of the pinks in. Maybe that'll make me feel more calm. Using blended complements should make it more neutral. Yeah, maybe that's how I'm getting to that, that look that I keep saying that I want. You're right, Judy. Yes, more neutral. Because I love bright colors, but bright colors sing more if they're surrounded by neutral colors. <laughs> Excellent, yes. Be brave, always be brave, right? Because you got nothing to lose. crazy, doesn't it? <clears throat> Equals mud. Yes, my goal is not to have mud, but it might happen. I'm hoping that by not mushing my colors together by putting down strokes and leaving them. It'll help it not to turn into mud, but there's no guarantees. This big green leaf here. Oh, right, Judy, there's always the Kemper tool. <laughs> Mud can be beautiful. That's a good point. Yes, I could always use the Kemper tool. I have it right here. See if that can soften my mud a little bit if I get mud. I'm not discouraged yet. It certainly looks like a hodgepodge. <laughs> Desaturated color. Yeah, let's call it that. That's good. Ellen, thank you. Greens are fun, aren't they? Sometimes I have trouble um, with greens. Um, sometimes my greens can end up being a little boring, for lack of a better word. That 
that's bright in there. That's dark. <clears throat> I'm thinking about values. And it is tricky for, for me to think about where colors go since um, it's not literal. What I have down isn't literally what I'm looking at. dancing around where I have some dark areas here. <clears throat> it is a nice color. Well, I had, it's on the west side of my house, so it's hard to get it in the sunlight too. Take a photo. Nature's greens are often way more neutral. Yes, you're right, Judy. They certainly are. Yeah, painting what you see and not what you think you see is always a trick. It is the craziest looking painting I've ever done on a Wednesday. I'll give you that. And having confidence to get through it and not give up is always a little tricky. <laughs> you think so, Anita? I don't, I don't know yet, but hopefully. I haven't given up hope yet. Some of those darks in here. And maybe make this recess a little bit. I need to think about value too. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm doing a lot of more thinking than I normally do when I'm painting. I think I need 
definitely to go more green in here. That's much darker on the edge there. <clears throat> Maybe if I get a few of the pieces pulled together, it'll look a little more um, it'll look better. A little more what I have no idea. A little more not terrible. I want to keep this little shadow in there. And then a little highlight right here. And that turned out okay. Now I think this is too bright over here. My, my brain's going right to that. Neutral this a little bit in here. I also don't want to cover up all the craziness too. I want to keep that some of that shine or show through anyway. Shine through. This is a fun little piece right here. Okay, so now I should do some more of of this. All muted. Yeah, it did mute them a lot, didn't it, Allie? Very muted. I think I'm running out of this light pink. Push the center area in a little bit also. Well, let me do a little more in here. Dirty brush. <clears throat> I think I need to push this back. And <clears throat> shadow in there. there I think <clears throat> yeah, brave or crazy right got to pick one or the other be brave or be crazy both are probably fun and the more of the right color that I get in there the better it looks right but then I'm going to have to be selective of, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think I need this to come over to here. I'm going to have to be selective of what I let peek through. <clears throat> like this is too crazy. Let's soften that back there. <clears throat> I like this right here. I'm gonna let that stay. And <clears throat> excuse me. 
sip of my coffee. Hard to get that at this point to get a, a really bright pink. Well, that'll work. leaf up there. It's a little confusing, isn't it? So I need to have this be darker right here. And keep that shadow. And make my edge a little more uniform. I think maybe I have this coming over too far. Let me adjust that. Sorry, I'm thinking. <clears throat> I guess that needs to go lighter because that really is in the light, this petal. there I see them coming out I like it looks kind of geometric a little bit doesn't it it's kind of got um somehow a little bit of a geometric vibe to it this needs to go a little lighter here Paint sets up and add a few highlights to saturated color. Yeah, that's a good idea, Ellen. Because I like these fun colors that are all popping through in here. This is a bright, and I have to do the center. Um, The colors are fun. Yeah, it's, it certainly has personality. I think that's a good thing. Um, push this in a little further here. to think of what what I how I want to do this inside I'm just gonna add in some I don't want it to get too tight sometimes when you get to an area like this where there's a lot going on it's hard not to want to get detailed like just naturally, I want to go in there with a smaller brush and really make those little things pop. But then it does, it's not co cohesive. It's not cohesive with the rest of the painting. Is that the right term? I think it is.
you're seeing the shadow areas and like all the colors in there. Oh, I see this needs to go. I'm gonna get green, I'm gonna get green on my brush. Now I put a little bit of a highlight on that petal. Um, I'm just still thinking. I think that green in there is a little too Bold. Let me soften that a little bit. Put some soft pink in there. giving that dimension. So what else do you see? Is there anything I missed? Love these colors popping through like I don't want to fuss with that because that it's so easy to lose that little magic like even now I'm fussing with it and I probably should just be finished unless I see something else it needs so look dimensional the dark in the photo behind the top petal really makes them pop forward the dark in the photo behind the top petal up here, Judy, is that what I need to have more dark up there? I don't know what you're thinking. Maybe especially right here. Little kisses of darkness. It is always, it's a dance between like darks and lights and brights and dulls. Ellen, what is it? A dull, a dark, a light, a dull, and a bright? Is that right? I always get that confused. I don't know why I can't remember that. <laughs> I do know why I can't remember anything. <laughs> that would be why. <laughs> yeah, I do like those neutral brown colors up in here. It's really pretty. Like they're, the foli foliage, foliage is very brown. I like this purple out. Let me just bring this just the slightest bit up here. Whoop, that was a little too much, but that's okay. I like that. <clears throat> uh, I like the pink showing through. I like this blue showing through. It's crazy, but it was fun. I can't say that I thought that it would turn out, but I think it did. Let me put a little light right there. Oh, okay. Is that dancing back and forth? I think I need to stop. Yeah, I think I need to stop. Okay, I'm going to sign it. Oops, I'm sorry. I was trying so hard not to bump you. I'm very brave. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Oh, my gosh. So there. See, no, wait. That's hard to get glare. Let's pull it off of here. 
so yeah I love all those like little splashes of color in there that unexpected color yeah I'm happy with it that's fun and there's my palette I really made a mess of that <laughs> all of it it's a big mess isn't it so that's my reference and there's the painting and 846 we're ahead of schedule I can get to work early today I actually I actually worked for a while, so I'm already thinking about layout and design and media plans and things like that. Oh, Leslie. So my idea for framing them, I'm having my framer do one for me under glass just to see what it looks like, although I don't love framing under glass. You can, I hear, if you leave like as much as a mat so that the paint doesn't touch the glass. And then I'm going to try one where it gets mounted onto a board, and then I'm gonna mount that onto another piece of the paper that I paint on, varnished but white, so it has like, it's floating on that with a frame around it. And then I also bought some wooden frames just this morning that, um, like my ampersand gesso boards, but I'm gonna try mounting the painting onto that, um, and then maybe keeping the sides the natural wood, so. I'm just experimenting and finding different ways. And one of the people that bought one of my paintings on paper in, I don't know if she's on here, she's in Canada. Um, she's gonna experiment with it too, so. So thanks for coming guys. Always fun hanging out with, yes, yes, I will show you when I have some finished ones. Judy, absolutely. So I hope you guys have a fabulous St. Patty's Day. Um, yeah, have fun. It's kind of like a holiday. Eat something green or drink something green, right? Thanks for coming. I will save this. I'll put it on my YouTube channel and I'll also save it on my um, on my website. You can get to it through the blog there and I'll send out my newsletter hopefully by tomorrow. And if anybody's not on my newsletter and you want to be, you can go on my link in my bio here on Instagram or when this is on YouTube later, you can click on the link in there and save it or get on my email list if you'd like to. Goodbye, Ellen. Goodbye, Jane. Bye, Gail. Thanks for coming, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next week. Bye.